ladies and gents, welcome to another episode of The Grit Theory. We are so glad you found us today. This is John Mayo with Aaron Robinson, and we are thrilled that you are joining us as we explore how challenge and adversity can be changed into opportunity. And don't forget, if you like what you hear today, please subscribe, share with your friends, and we love your comments. So without further ado, let's jump right into another episode of The Grit Theory. everybody welcome to our seventh episode of the grit theory i am here joined with joined by john mayo hello good morning and our special guest today is none other than the magnanimous the infinitely patient and of course pretty Lindsay mayo good morning <laughs> she loves that yes <laughs> we are so glad you're here today Lindsay. thank you for having me yeah how, how are we feeling I'm excited and nervous because you both are looking at me like you're going to fire some questions away that I'm not willing to answer or ready to answer. <laughs> well, I just love that this is this is going to be my treat today uh, because if you if we do get you all you know crazy, I leave and John, <laughs> John yeah. is here, so he's going to be cautious. I think he'll be fine. Don't worry about that. I'll be working outside <laughs> after this. Uh, I'll need to settle. This is actually this episode. I'm. I think is going to be a real treat for everybody. This is a, this is going to be encouraging for everybody here at the table and everyone listening because we're going to be talking about what happens when friendship happens, or what when friendship rises to the occasion. Mm -hmm. This is kind of what we're going to be talking about today, and and I love that. Additionally, it's in the context of marriage, yeah. Um, which, in my opinion, is the highest form of friendship in this life that we can we can ever hope to see. And when it's done right, um, what what a beautiful friendship can be inside of marriage. And so we're going to talk about this is kind of part two to our Winter 55 episode. Mm -hmm. Correct. I'm so, what was that? Five, I think. Okay. I think it was five. Okay. We'll go with five. Ish. And so you, so if you haven't heard that. It was four. Okay. Four. <laughs> I'm so glad there's a lady at the table right yeah. now. Fact checking. <laughs> <laughs> the dynamic is already here. It's fun. <laughs> we're not gonna we're not gonna be able to get away with just like sort of loose facts or anything. When no. it's like ah nope, <laughs> it was four. Okay, so, so four. Ever. Check out four, and so if you haven't heard four, that would give you context. Backtrack for what we're gonna talk about today. Yeah, the winter fifty five. Winter fifty five. Yeah. Um. Okay. So I'm gonna tee this up uh, a little yeah. bit. Yeah. Do you want to show you teed up and then? Maybe I'll, I'll add a bit of context depending on that. Yeah, I want to hand off. I'm going to hand. Yeah, I, I I didn't live the story. I observed it. Yeah. So I want. <laughs> so what did you observe? <laughs> I, you know, first of all, just to back up, like when we, when you just kind of willy nilly threw out, Aaron, yeah, I think I'm going to do a hundred day challenge. When when John says challenge, he doesn't mean like, hey, I'm not going to, you know, I'm going to I'm going to limit my sugar intake or you know, I'm going to do an extra push up or something. It's it's going to be something significant. And when you told me, you know what, uh, we just got off of doing 5k's for 21 days and which you were a runner before anyway, really. Yeah. No. <laughs> you know, no. you have some running in your history years ago. Yeah. Um but you're like, yeah, I'm going to run 5k you know, and you haven't been running really. Mm -hmm. And you're going to say, I'm going to do 100, you said I'm going to do 100 days in a row and then I'm going to add uh 10, lifting to pounds, it. 10,000 pounds a day. And I was I was like, John, a hundred days. Come on. I mean, you went twenty-one, and then you more than quadruple it. Yep. And you. <laughs> that's kind of how that conversation went. I was like, okay. So as we were running, actually, I think we talked about this because we were finishing up the twenty-one day challenge. That may have been what it was. And we're like, hey, yeah. Right after Christmas, I think we're going to start a hundred day. Yeah, because you also kicked that hundred days off with twenty-one days of drinking. Right. Which was quite an idea. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> yeah, it, it's like all these. These challenges, we know they're hand in glove with all the other decisions we got to make. Mm -hmm. So that's why we like making them. We're kind of breaking our mind. Yeah. Because there's so many difficulties you're going to hit in life. And so if you train yourself to not say no to things or or also also open the idea that you can do more mm -hmm. than you are doing right now. So you did that. You decided to do the 100 day. Yes. Okay. So that's what I observed. So I'm going to stop there. Okay. Okay. So when did you tell me yeah. what went from there? 
And, and I know we had the Winter 55 episode, yeah. so we don't want to rehash everything. But so so to, build, yeah. to build on the Winter 55, successful lift a million pounds in 100 days, mm -hmm. consistency. Mm -hmm. The goal from the onset was consistency, right? What happens if I'm disciplined routinely for 100 days? What will become of me? And, well, mm -hmm. kind of looking back a lot, right? We In the Winter 55, we discussed about how ultimately injury forced me to change the plan in pursuit of the goal, right? The goal being consistency. The injury, meaning I couldn't continue running without risk of tearing both my Achilles tendons. Um, so I had to adjust, right? So we went into great depth there, adjusted, continued, waked up, uh, you know, amped up my wake up time way earlier, continued lifting and did a few other things to meet the same requirements of discipline I wanted. Um, and it, it's been awesome because the grip theory was born during this challenge, yeah. right? That was pretty cool. And uh, I feel like a different person capability and how I see the world. So uh, on those ends, it's been wonderful. And I'm already thinking through what the next challenges are going to be um, and what, what I want to gain from them. And I think one of the greatest goals though, was when you set a target, being okay, adjusting the tactics or strategy to accomplish the end state yeah. if necessary. Right. Because I started to lose sight of my goal in the challenge when I was running into physical limitations. Yep. Um, and we adjusted from that. So the the thing though, outside of the personal benefits and, and the joy of, of what's occurred with all that, I think the thing that has affected me the, the most and is the coolest thing, and frankly like hit me on every level of being, was I read the synopsis of the Winter 55, which we read in the that episode to Lindsay before I shared it with anyone else. So it's like, hey, uh, am I stupid to consider letting anyone know I wrote this? Mm -hmm. Right? Yeah. And she sat behind me at my desk and I read it and she was stretching and she's like, yep, yeah, it's good. And she walked out and I was like, oh, okay, <laughs> it's, yeah. it's good. We kind of talked about this, but what was really cool and the reason that I'm so thrilled to have her with us today is because she's the, the quiet hero in the background yep. that is ever moving and is a force to be reckoned with and the reason our four sons do well the reason our house is held together and the reason that we a huge foundational piece in how we thrive as a marriage and she does these incredible things without any fanfare without any request for resolve and one such thing is she said okay she went downstairs i'm like okay i start working again 45 minutes later she had changed and done the first of 45 5ks that she would do to ensure that the running portion of the challenge continued despite my inability to continue it. And Lindsay didn't have a boat on the front end. I'm curious, like, <laughs> like, how did that go when you when he told you, I'm going to do a 100-day challenge before it got started? Were you just kind of, like, roll your eyes, oh, here we go, it's John again? Or, yeah, oh. basically. Yeah. <laughs> like, so you're... you're you just kind of roll with it when he goes, yeah. we're going to go do this. You look at him and go, how much money is this going to cost us? <laughs> and then you say, okay, what's the time commitment? And can we physically do it? Right. And then you go, okay, cool. Let's do it. <laughs> like when he yeah. was wanting yeah. to get out of the military, he called me up. Like we've not talked for days. And he goes, I've been thinking this, but I'm not sure. Maybe we need to pursue something different. And I go, right. what, what happens if you leave? And he's like, was that a choice? And I was like, yeah. So we'll figure it out. Huh. And he, he's like, wait. You think it's okay for me to get out of the military? I was like, absolutely. Is that I will support you in anything that you want to do. Yeah. I've, I've always done that. I've always held true to that. I mean. <clears throat> a, real, a real quick piece of context there, because I think it's really important from the military community is, um, unless you're on the rocks, like heavily on the rocks, mm -hmm. and like your, your partner is saying like, you need to get out or I'm gone, mm -hmm. which that does happen. Mm -hmm. um, most people are like, you aren't getting out. Why do you get out? It's scary. Yeah. How, where's our home? How are we going to eat? Yep. Right. Like the, the military is all people in the military know for the most part. And, and going mm -hmm. through the veil to figure out how are we going to be okay on the other side? Yeah. Is a scary thing. So when you have brand new twins. And he was at the height of his career. Well, mm -hmm. I, I was do, uh, I was, he, he was really. doing well. Yeah. He yeah. was doing very well. I, I was. Mm -hmm. positioned to continue climbing very well. Mm -hmm. And so, so to say, Hey, let's jump into complete uncertainty with no idea what to do with brand new twins and a bunch of kids and 
having no idea what the next steps are. That's where it's so incredible to hear that. Okay, let's figure it out. I support you. Because it's like, what? <laughs> it's not like, yeah, go climb a mountain. It's, <laughs> we don't know where we'll live, but we'll figure it out. So you guys, you guys, like, it seems to me, and this is part of, like, when you're doing a challenge, uh, we've talked about this before, D- don't assume that whatever challenge you're having is a solo thing. If the people mm-hmm. around you who love you are absolutely going to be a part of it, whether they had a vote or not. So why not just have the conversation? Because it's gonna, it's ultimately going to happen. Uh, it's just better if you could be included in it. So you guys actually did talk, and and you're just you know sometimes we just kind of accept each other for what we are, but also talk through it so you understand it kind of thing. So you've had a history of this. Yeah, very much so. And yeah, <laughs> just smiling at each other. I wanted to say too, like this is radio podcast you know it's like you can't see anything but Lindsay is smaller in stature right you many of our listeners know know who you are and if, and love you um and she she's you wouldn't assume like she's like this really strong willed tough person i mean you have red hair i mean there's that little warning <laughs> yeah <laughs> i'm a foot shorter and a hundred pounds lighter than he is yes yeah so you know you could probably just sink into that personality i guess i'm just a small little girl i don't mm-hmm. kind of think but you but you you believe in yourself you have <laughs> strong confidence right and john's like you don't even know <laughs> you do that half of it. <laughs> and so, so you're not you're not like uh, you're not unaware of what it is to decide to do things that are difficult or or decide to to make your way happen right yeah right? i've pretty much done that my entire life yeah so are you I've worried? always been small. Where are you in the birth order? I'm just curious. Is I'm that a middle a... child. Oh, okay. All right. So not your typical middle child. I was gonna say you had a little bit more. It, normally, the middle isn't that like kind of a pleaser, and that's I'm very not... much so that. Yeah, you still have that. Yeah. <laughs> so here we are, uh, John. Um, this is this is a great opportunity inside of a marriage, or mm-hmm. in, that you fe- you came to failure. Um. And you couldn't run anymore. It was like day 55. Mm-hmm. And your thought was, okay, just change this up. I'm alone in this. Mm-hmm. In some, on some level, like, no one's really paying attention to kind of fix or to get things to the next level. This is my decision. I, I'm going to own it. But you didn't know in the background that Lindsay had decided, all right, 100-day challenge is going to happen. You know, 55 is just, a, is just a reroute. And so when did you pick us up there, Lindsay? Kind of what was your thinking there? So I was stretching because I'd just done a really intense workout while he was reading me the winner 55. And I think the thing that hit me the most was the part where he says that he is mortal. And I mean, like, that's one of those things where we are all mortal, but we don't think about that a lot. We don't really understand that our bodies fail us day in and day out. People develop cancer. They break bones. I mean, your children can fall off of something and you're going to the ER. It happens day in and day out. And we genuinely don't grasp that concept that we are mortal beings, that our next breath is not guaranteed, our next day is not guaranteed. And for me to hear that, it was like, wow, I'm not mortal but, or I am mortal, but at the same time, it was me thinking and looking at him going, I know how much this challenge meant to him. Mm -hmm. I know what this hundred days was because he's been doing the 21 days challenge. And it, for him, it's not just the physical, the physicals where he gets to escape and in his mind, he thinks through things. And that's what running was for me. Anytime our marriage has gotten really difficult, He'll come home and I'll say, kids are in bed. I'm going to run. (laughs) And I will. I'll go and I'll run, you know, a mile if that's what it is or whatever. And so I went and I can't, I well, I can run outside, but I have four small humans. So I've been running on the treadmill for the last 45 days, (laughs) staring at a wall. At first it was in the basement, which was really rough. And then we moved it upstairs. So that's at least helpful. I kind of get to look out some of a window, but because of the placement of where it's at, I am staring at a wall Mm -hmm. and running on the treadmill takes a whole separate type of a discipline in general. Mm -hmm. But my perspective was, I want to be able to pick up where he's not able to continue and to show him that 
it's not just him who does go through the challenges. Like you were saying, this isn't solo to prove to not even just prove to him, but to kind of walk alongside him and say, I'm your wife and I've got this for you. Right. And kind of just kind of walk through that. So do you, do you, and, it, and sorry to interrupt, but it's like, um, just speaking to the ladies out there, I'm just, I'm wondering, cause my wife has told me this too. Is there's, there's kind of a heart of a wife that she wants to know, like, wh- where are those gaps that her husband has? Cause she really wants to help, mm-hmm. but guys are, are so stinking proud all the time. We'd rather just hide it or deal with it ourselves. Or they're not aware. Or they're not aware. Yeah. Well, and, and that's you open enjoy that. communication yeah. is really a big thing. Right. And I do. I enjoy running. I really love running. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm not necessarily the fastest or the best at it, mm-hmm. but I will go distance. I love signing up for like 5K, 10K mm-hmm. runs and things like that. Actually, after our podcast, I plan on going to run anywhere between 6 to 12 miles today. We'll see how it goes. <laughs> not on the treadmill. No, not on the <laughs> treadmill. Um, but I. I think it, if you don't allow your partner into the areas that you're struggling, it could be their strengths. And you will uh, never know that if you don't uh, invite them in. That is such a great, that's a great statement right there. That you'll never know where the, the strengths of the partner may rise out of just being humble about where, where the, the person fell, really, or right. has failure whether it be secret or blatant. Often, you know, I, I've noticed too, oftentimes a failure as a husband is more blatant than we realize. <laughs> we just we just need to have the courage to, to call it out. And it's amazing how in a marriage that could be a real opportunity. Yeah. So, um, when, yeah. She was a bit angry with me too, leading up to that day because she's like, why are you doing this? I'm going to pick you up on the supper room, you know? Mm-hmm. So like it was evident and it was part of it. And I don't think I'm aware of, how much these things I think only affect me affect my family yeah. and affect my, my bride and, and, you know, my friends and everything else. So like, it's hard to say, oh, I'm waking up at four 30 and working out. Who cares? Like, who's it touching? Everyone's asleep, you know, but it has effects. And when you're limping across the room, of course, your wife is gonna, that part kind of got her attention. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> kind of. <laughs> it, it's interesting though, to your point though, Aaron, and, and well, you, you started the point, Lindsay, of when, when you're looking at, if you, I don't know your feelings, those may be my strengths, or I may have the strength to cover that, right? Or we may find a solution that mitigates that need altogether. Yeah. Like I, think, it, I think that's true in any partnership. Like the initial seeds of destruction and diminishing of a relationship or a partnership that has a goal in mind, yeah. right? Uh, is assumptions and lack of communication, yeah. right? If, if you, if you put in some form of ability to call out assumptions and confirm or deny them, right, good or bad, mm-hmm. and communicate to to end states clearly, it's so empowering. I mean, you and I just did that for mm-hmm. one of the pursuits we're doing. Mm-hmm. Like, hey, do we both want the same things? Mm-hmm. Do we see this relationship the same way? And guess what? The assumptions were yes, but we confirmed they were yes, and the mm-hmm. confirmation is what gives us the faith that if you hit a turbulence, some turbulence, or you hit a failure, you hit a struggle, it's like, we want the same things. We just need to partner together stronger. And whether that is building a business or something like that, or whether it's a marriage mm-hmm. and raising children, yeah. you know, like having those touch points is so incredibly critical. Um, it's a beautiful thing. If you let, allow that to happen, I, I noticed Marriage is the highest level of this, but even in our friendships, like if you go around and you think about who you've chosen to spend the most time with or who you most admire, there's probably something in them that they're strong at you're not. Mm-hmm. And it's fascinating to you and, and admirable. You go, man, how do I, that, that is such a cool, whatever. It could be talent. Mm-hmm. It could be a mindset or how they think of things or process. And you just want to kind of observe almost. And inside of a marriage, we, we have this great, uh, ability to exercise uh, for each other those mm-hmm. things that we're good at and so here you are at this this decision that you you like to run but at the same time that was his thing 
And now you're going to be on his terms because he set the challenge up for himself, but you've adopted it <laughs> Yes, as your own thing. Yeah. And about, um, I think it was day five, I slipped and fell on ice. Oh. And I wrecked my lower back, hurt my leg, oh. scraped up my entire elbow, and I hadn't run yet. <sighs> I could barely walk. I was absolutely miserable. And so I went and I did what I had to do. And then I came back home, picked up the boys and everything. And I heel toe shuffled, shuffled it yeah. on the treadmill <laughs> for 3.22 miles <laughs> because 3.1 wasn't enough. Yeah. That's another thing. John did set out. It's not a five. It was a little bit more than a 5K because that's a, I don't know why you, why did you do that? Because he ran to the church up the street. It was a landmark. Well, mentally though, because there was another one. There was a sign that was exactly three point one miles. Yeah, I ran. I that ran that. Accurate. And that's when I, I told him <laughs> very early when we did the twenty one days. Like this yeah. is actually where we're supposed to turn around, John. So you know, let's go to there. Yeah. Well, anything you do in life, I, I, my my belief is if you do something, do an extra percent, whatever. Okay. Do an extra rep. So that's a five k. No, it's it's a five k and extra ten. Do 10,000 pounds, do at least 10,100 pounds, mm -hmm. right? That you, what, do 100 days, I did 101. Whatever the challenge is, whatever life is, if you give an extra bit, that's my goal. So, so now Lindsay has, yeah. has to deal with Correct. <laughs> that mentality. Thank you. Always. <laughs> Always. That's normal. <laughs> so you were hurt and, like, and you did it. But what about the next day? Like, did, we, did you feel a little better? Or, like, how did no, you go with I that? I didn't feel good probably for a week, week and a half. Mm -hmm. wow. wow. And so I walked um, probably for about four or five days, I think. So it was a, a little faster pace of a walk, but I couldn't run. It, it was extreme amount of pain. I'm sure I bruised something like my tailbone. So when I quit, and this is John's thing, right? Like Because I knew, because the day that I fell, he goes, well, I'll walk it. And I go, no, you won't. Uh I said, you, you physically cannot, you will injure yourself more. He goes, no, I'll do it. I said, I looked at him and I said, I told you run, walk or crawl. I will do the challenge for you. And he goes, okay, but I can do it. And I said, no, I'm not going to allow you to injure yourself more. So compassion was driving you. Right. And this is one of the first times that he's ever really been injured sustainably for more than a maybe a week two weeks max. So like, this is still something that he's, he's healing through it, but he still has to watch what he's doing currently mm -hmm. because his tendons have not fully healed. Yeah. So there have been many a days where I just have felt absolutely miserable or I'm tired and I didn't want to do it. We built the pool last weekend for a good example. Mm -hmm. And I was inside and I'd been doing a bunch of stuff in the house, went outside, helped him build the pool. Mm -hmm. We had something else that we had to go do Put the boys down. It's eight thirty at night. I still haven't ran. And I forgot to have lifted that day. Mm. So. so I looked at him and I go, "So I'll see you at about ten o'clock." He goes, "Yep, see you at ten o'clock." Oh, uh, so it's like, oh, I gotta do it. I forgot. Yep. And it was yeah. the fastest time I've ran on the treadmill. <laughs> she crushed it. I noticed that way when we were when we were doing the uh, before the winter fifty five. We did the twenty one. This is like it was really cold. Mm. Like it was starting yes. to snow really bad and. There were several days where we were like, you should not be doing this. But it was amazing. I got some of the best times when I was running at night because that was the only time I could do it that day because mm -hmm. I didn't know how it was going. And you just, it's almost like the difficulty drives you that much more. It makes you more focused yeah, to get it through does. it. It helps. Mm -hmm. I've also started watching a lot of Netflix movies. <laughs> hey, we're keeping it real here. Watching right. Netflix movies while running has been, it become an escape for her. She so, loves it. Yeah. So it helps. So but I'm just I like, Sam, help me. Because running on the treadmills, oh. it takes a whole separate type of mental fortitude to run 3.22 miles <laughs> on the treadmill. There's a, uh, I don't know if we've talked about this just before. Boredom. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's, sometimes it's funny. It's like, we talk about difficulty and sometimes there's like, there's necessary difficulty. Sometimes there's unnecessary difficulty, like having to stare at a wall on a treadmill. You don't have to do that that way. You could just change it up. Right. You know, whatever, whatever that thing is, just make it easier for yourself. Give yourself a process to stay consistent. Um, it's, you know, we talked about if you, if you want to diet, don't keep Doritos in the pantry, keep them at the, the store. Right. You know, mm -hmm. um, if you want to consistently stay at something. It's like, okay, what does that environment look like? Plan that out and then and then execute. You know, it'll help the consistency with that. 
Yeah. So, so I, if, I'd like to dig deeper past the challenge mm -hmm. because, you know, it's cool. 100 days is done. Darling, thank you for doing the run. Yeah, it was done Wednesday. Wednesday. So I finished Thursday. It's not Saturday. Yesterday was the only day I didn't run. Yeah. But, okay. So we finished. The That's why I'm going to go run like six miles today. Yeah. So make up your Christmas. By the way, the, the, the purpose of these challenges is to change lifestyle, right? right? Through incremental mental shifts through the challenges. And, and it works. Like I slept in this morning till like 6.30 and hated myself. I, was, I lost two hours of my day sleeping till 6.30. What am I doing? Mm -hmm. um, but but that's the point, right? She She's ran for the last 45 days and she's like, I missed it. I hate that. I'm doing it again. It's it's lifestyle change, and, and that's the tool of the consistency, right? And and it's fun, you know. There's a lot of people who could have done twenty thousand pounds a day instead of ten. There's a lot of people who could run a marathon a day instead of five k, right? Um, and not had any injury, you know, not had to have adjusted it, and that, that's fine, you know. We we can't compare ourselves to where someone else is today. We have to compare ourselves to who we were yesterday and and who we want to become tomorrow, mm -hmm. right? And but um. There, there's value in that. But what, what I think affected me the most and what I want to dig into more is kind of some of Lindsay's character. Mm -hmm. And because it was the symbolism of the run and what it meant for her to choose to pick that up and what I knew her intent was in doing it, that was powerful. Like the fact that she ran, who cares, right? I mean, I care, but like, Okay, it was what she was stating through the action mm -hmm. that was really cool mm -hmm. in our partnership. You're, <laughs> did you think that was going to happen? That this would affect John? Because just seeing so you know, it like offline, John was telling me how impressed he was by you. Like, legit. Like, this is incredible that she's doing this for me. Um, and and I, I was like, John, you are welcome to have a wife like you know that we yeah. had to decide to do that. You better be thanking God. How did you get so lucky? Because <laughs> that's a whole different story. <laughs> and and, we're, and I, uh, I know how. So I <laughs> be careful. So I know uh, maybe a lady's listen to this and they're thinking, well, is that the expectation all wives should have? It's like that's a personal decision, right? Mm -hmm. You decided this for you. That's. Right. Not setting some standard for all wives everywhere to do this because men start lots of dumb ideas and don't finish them. And it's not their wives' responsibility to finish it. But you decided to do that. Um, Digging back into the wives' yeah. curiosity, huh? Yeah. Yeah. What? I think more than anything, like I said, the mortal thing. Like, I've seen Jonathan be mortal in general. Yeah. But I've never seen him go through such excruciating pain. Right. I've not seen him have to physically quit or especially with fitness, like everybody who sees him just automatically starts thinking this guy, this guy's huge. Like, what do you do? Oh, I have all sorts of people. You're shaking your head at me. I have all sorts okay. of people who even with the podcast are like, Oh, is it about fitness podcast? Is he coaching someone through that? Mm -hmm. He's like, no, it has nothing to do with that. But for me, he's never failed in mm -hmm. that area. When we used to live in California, the man was crazy and he'd run in 110 degree weather to the point where he was almost passing out on the side of the road because he forgot to bring water. <laughs> so it's like, but he wouldn't quit. He still finished the rest of the way home. I mean, the amount of mental fortitude that he has to push through physical ailments is incredible mm -hmm. and i think it sets a standard not just for our, him but for our boys and for those who are around him like if you know you're coming to work out with jonathan you know you're in for it yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like there have been people who are like oh i yeah. want to come work out with him and i will look at them and i will say no yeah you shouldn't do that <laughs> yeah oh, uh goodness. john just a uh, fun example uh this was yesterday uh, got done, and there were two towels sitting on the floor. I was like, "That's weird." <laughs> Why are the towels? We're not sweating that much. Sure. <laughs> it's it's thirty degrees out. I'm, you know, the sweat it freezes. It freezes. <laughs> Doesn't stick around too long. Oh man! And uh, he just they just uh, filled a pool, which is outside in thirty degree weather. 
I don't trust that thermo- thermometer at all. It said 46. I'm sure it was. Le- I can't believe it's warmer than ambient temperature. <laughs> it's got to be wrong. And the, to the pool we went. And all you said was two or three minutes. That was your question. Um, <laughs> there, there wasn't even a question. That, it wasn't the question of like, hey, Aaron, do you want to do this? Like, I, I don't remember. I don't remember being asked what my opinion of this was. <laughs> just, no, it was an expectation. Yeah, it's like, <laughs> so, all right, to finish up, we're going to do two to three minutes. And we've been doing holds up to this point, like heavyweight holds and static positions. And Aaron's like, okay, uh, I'll set the timer. And he was like, started walking back to the bag. I was like, no, Aaron, like, in the pool. <laughs> He's like, wait, what? <laughs> you, were, you weren't joking? <laughs> no. <laughs> And that's for yeah. you. It's fun. It's like it's, it's a challenge, and it's not something you're normally used to doing either. And mm-hmm. but it was, it, it, yeah, it, it, that having a friend like John, I can't imagine you being married. Oh my goodness, <laughs> Lindsay, all the time. Like I could leave. You're here. <laughs> yeah. I dish it just as much as he does, though. So you're a tough gal. <laughs> can't paint him with two dollar light. <laughs> what, what did you? So we getting through that. Though, did, were you surprised that you could do that, or did you just you knew to run to do forty five days straight? No, I wasn't necessarily yeah. surprised about. I love to run, and if I could run daily, I absolutely would. And I mean, I've proved that I can for the last forty five days. Um, but it's more the time commitment, and it's the the mental like I have to fit this into my day. Yes, that's my point. Is that you had so many outs? Yeah. So there were days yeah. that I woke up. Yeah. At like five a.m. And I would run. Um, right. I drink my coffee for the first couple of minutes as I'm walking, and yep. I spilled it a couple of different times. <laughs> but then there were days where I would run in the middle of the day, or I'd run late at night, or he'd be done with work, and I'd be like, "Okay, hey, dinner's on the table. I'll be out when I'm done running. Like I, I know what the rest of our evening looks like. I gotta get this done." And so I would go run fast as I could, basically. So, Lindsay, like, I could give you the reasons why you should quit on this. Oh, right? I had many of them. Yes. Like, you have four small children, mm-hmm. right? Uh, you you volunteer and do and do different things. You're the one that takes the kids to the school. You're the, you know, you, you're the one taking care of most of the morning routine. I, I don't know. I'm sure you guys share stuff. But, but primarily, you you have all this responsibility to all that. And you could say, well, I'm super busy. Like, by anybody's standards... I'm stacked as far as my schedule goes. Right. And, but you, it's like you didn't acknowledge that that is a reason to quit. Yeah. It wasn't, it wasn't a thought in my mind. Even the day that I fell on ice, um, I'm not a big like crier from pain. Mm -hmm. And I was full blown in tears. Mm -hmm. I shuffle, walked back in, grabbed some Motrin, told him, I fell on ice. I love you. Have a good day. Walked right back out to the car. Don't ask me any questions. (laughs) Yeah. Just one of the, I did walk her back out to the car. Mm -hmm. (laughs) So, I mean, it was, for me, it was just the, I get to pick up where he left off. Mm. And it's, it goes back to that being open and honest and it's it's sharing your load Mm -hmm. it's a baton race this Mm -hmm. life isn't a sprint that's right and it's unfair in a marriage to have him feel like he has to hold all these things Mm -hmm. or for me to have to hold all these things right when you start to get into the nitty gritty of those things and go, I really need you to take this off my plate for a little bit. Are you willing? Are you able? Can you finish it through? Yeah. You know, and you have to ask those questions. He didn't necessarily ask that question. He was just like, where well, I'm going to have to just, you know, change my, my standpoint. But he didn't want to change his standpoint. And I saw that he was physically unable Mm -hmm. to continue. And I knew how much this challenge meant to him, whether he'll admit it or not. I mean, Mm -hmm. it, it changed, these challenges have, have changed his thinking, have changed the outcome of our, our marriage and the way that he looks at the boys, the way he interacts with them. But I think even more on just sharing his, his load it shows the boys that 
when one person fails, there's at least somebody else who lovingly cares for you, who can pick up where you left off, help pick up some of the pieces and continue on. That's right. It's the whole, like, don't cry over spilled milk. It can be cleaned up. And if you have more milk, get another glass. (laughs) It doesn't matter. You know, and for me to be able to say, hey, I'll finish this out for you. And every day I text him a picture of my watch. Some days uh, were way slow and other days were really fast. Um, Some days my heart rate was through the roof. (laughs) Most days my heart rate Mm -hmm. was through the roof. And other days I was okay. Mm -hmm. Mostly. What did that do to you as a subserver? Well, I, I feel like the physicality of this is so not the target, mm-hmm. right? Um, as an observer, it, it was the embodiment of if you want to go far, go together, right? Mm-hmm. If you want to go fast, go alone, or um, you know, where one man may, like one person, may fall down. If woe to them, they're in trouble if they're by themselves. Yep. But if they have someone with them, they can get lifted back up, right? So it's this embodiment of that, of where I didn't ask her to do the run. I didn't even think about the potential of someone else continuing the run. It's like, just need to just target, right? Keep going. And the, the sim, what, what affected me was the, the symbolism or the story, the metaphor that it represented, right? And how we have been with each other through our marriage and what we want to continue to foster and create. It's the, it's part of the piece. You know, I talk a lot about <laughs> there's about 90% of myself. I want to burn off, get rid of, destroy. <laughs> and I want to pull out the 10%. That's part of the 10% of our marriage. I want to pull out and keep, keep growing. Right. And, um, so it, it affected me, uh, deeply on, I, I think a holistic level. Right. And what, what I'm interested in, and it was just, it was bloody encouraging. Like it's motivating. It's like, wow. Like why is she, doing that right she's dang busy you know our four young children are you know twin four-year-olds to a seven-year-old boy they are all american hot-blooded lads right they they go out shirtless with hatchets hunting wolves when they hear something funny they are shooting their bows and arrows they're wreaking havoc like little tasmanian devils they don't stop to quote one of my buddies he said waking up in the mail house is not a feat for the faint-hearted <laughs> and to see Lindsay come out and start peacefully drinking coffee and talking with people as if everything's completely normal uh, in a war zone is weird and scary. And um, so like to hear that, you know, I hope that today we can also, I want to pull more and more out of you love, because there's, there's thoughts here. And like one of our friends, I won't name him here. He's like, Oh, please take advantage of this opportunity with her. Cause I want to understand her thought process more. Cause I don't know how she does it. I don't know why she does it. And it yeah. is, the holistic view of what you do with the kids and everything else. And r- real quick, as we circle to that, mm-hmm. you, you mentioned you were talking about the effects that these challenges have had on our family that I've been doing. And what I heard in that is that you saw value in what those effects were outside of myself, how they were affecting yours and I's relationship, how they're affecting the, our relationship with the boys. And it sounds like you wanted to preserve that in part by continuing this. Is that fair? Yes. Okay. What are those effects? Selfish question. (laughs) I think some of the effects that I've seen, especially in the boys, are they have two parents who rarely say no to opportunity. Um, And the challenges have just become part of what we are doing whether it's just you or the boys come out in the morning and want to lift weights with you because they see you striving for excellence and somehow inside them, they want to do that. Mm -hmm. And they see you setting that example and they want to do that with you. Like our oldest ran a 5k with you and that's the first time he's ever done it. And he's never been more proud. And I think that that's something that's interesting too, because when they understand that we are their encouragement through the process. They, they have someone who's always backing them. 
it puffs them up with pride to understand that you and I are willing to go the distance with them. And they're little. So obviously they can understand what they can understand, but they see that in you and me. I mean, I sat while I was running on the treadmill one day and our oldest was reading books to me because he needed to get his reading in. And that's real rough because when you're teaching a child to read and you're trying to focus on running, it's hard. (laughs) But he loved it. And he was just like, okay, mom's in here. I'll just be in here with her. Mm -hmm. It was just part of our day. It feels familiar. I mean, what you're doing in teaching and training the kids translates from your personal decisions to challenge yourself and push through. It's it's kind of the same kind of governor that hits, like when we have to go the distance, like you said, with your kids. It feels the same as when you have to go the distance at 930 at night because you've got to get your run in or something. It's like, mm-hmm. okay, well, I don't want to do this right now, but... I'm going to push in because it's, that's what you do. And I've I've exercised that muscle of, I don't want to do this. I'm going to do it anyway. (laughs) Right. John. Did I answer your question? Not really. No, no. The the example to the children, I'm I'm curious if there's just more there and if there's not, that's fine. Um, The example to the children is a great aspect of that. So yes, you did answer the question. I, I just want to keep digging a little bit, see if there's anything else to unearth because you're right, and you, you do see a difference in the kids. I mean, if we are what we do, right? If we are who we pretend to be, we are what we do, we are the resulting action of our habits, however you want to say it. Um, children will learn and adapt, adopt or reject what their influences are, right? So mm-hmm. the example piece makes sense to me. Was there anything, was there a ch- I guess my question, once again, this is a selfish question, mm-hmm. but hey, we're having some genuine talk conversation here, which is our goal. Um, did the way I interact with you or them change, or is it just the example piece? Not that just to demean it, but. Well, I think the whole, you know, burn off the 90%, keep the 10%, and you've been pursuing that for quite some time. Um, I think with the challenges, it's absolutely marked a goal a lot easier for you instead of just kind of going through like, well, I heard this, and so now I'm going to, you know, restructure this part of the platform. But the the challenges have kept you consistent for this amount of time. And um it has caused you to pause in your reactions. It's caused you to kind of be more thoughtful in the way that you interact with us, especially since I started the run. I think not necessarily seeing you and I as equal physically because we are nowhere near that but I think it was enough in you to be like I know she's got me Mm -hmm. like that's at least what I saw from it I saw you kind of shift in the mentality of I'm doing all these things for our family and she's willing to step into my realm into my world and help me out it it, does it make you kind of up your game when you observe her is it, it like it's your, what you said? It's not about the run. Mm-hmm. It's what it means. Oh yeah. And what that meant to you caused you to react. Yes. In a positive way. <laughs> catalysts yeah. upon catalysts. Yeah. I mean, it almost made it easier to want to respond to her. You didn't have to think about it. It's just observing. Right. Yes. It it, it, yeah. it further distances the ability to choose the easier route. Right. Uh-huh. To quote a friend. Um, avoiding pain, like the, the pursuit to avoid pain is an exercise of insanity, <laughs> right? <laughs> so that's kind of fun. But, uh, but it, it's true. And, you know, Jock is a big proponent of discipline equals freedom. Mm-hmm. And that's, that's bloody true, mm-hmm. right? If you're disciplined, if you, you know, there's this concept called Sisu, which is finished, but it's a universal human trait to, uh, encourage and foster strength, tenacity, indomitability, mm-hmm. um, grit perseverance right and we are what we we build ourselves to be you know you, the old adage you are what you eat right you get a bunch of twinkies you're going to probably look like a twinkie right yeah. if if you eat well you'll probably be a significant batch healthier and yeah it's also true of what you do so her doing that though it's like pouring not lighter fluid because lighter fluid just burns up so fast but it's just adding fuel to inferno yeah. and 
oil that just lasts. That lasts. Burns. Yeah. And, and, and to answer your question specifically, yeah. what happened when I saw Lindsay doing it? it? It was absolutely. It's like, because sometimes it feels lonely. I have three business ventures right now. I have a full-time job. We have a hobby ranch. Well, I should say we told those. We have three business ventures. You know, I'm doing the full-time job. We have the ranch. We have four sons to raise. And mm-hmm. we are very intentional in the time spent. And we have relationships to, to foster, mm-hmm. right? And it's like, well, why the heck am I doing all this? I could cut out all three ventures. I could simplify the ranch and just have my nine to five and nine to six and eight to whatever and the kids. And it's because I think that we both believe that we can inspire something and foster in them to go further than we can, right? Into each other. And into each other. <laughs> Encourage a relationship and yeah. stuff. And and I, I think our mutual goal, well, I know for a fact, because we've talked about it and written it down to find it and continue to look back to it, is our, is our goal is to position our children and equip them for the road mm-hmm. in such a way that they're ready to push into the storm, push through adversity, mm-hmm. and they see it and they invite it with a smile and chuckle in their breast. And the reason they do that is because they have a vision on what they want to pursue as their ideal in their world that exceeds where we can even imagine. Mm-hmm. Right. And we're, so we're not, I, I don't want, by God, I'll donate everything we ever create if those kids get soft, but you know, we're trying to foster young men. Right. And, and what I'm hearing and to answer your question, Aaron, I said that twice now, so I will answer immediately <laughs> is yes. Her doing, that, TikTok, John. Yeah. Come on. <laughs> her doing that though, absolutely inspired in me. Uh, like yeah. if there was any question of quit or I'm going to start taking a, a slacker, easier path, or I'm not going to continue to pursue these things that might flames a passion mm-hmm. in my breast that I can share with my family. Um, that absolutely did it. And it fortified, Hey, what you're doing is appreciated, even though we are sacrificing yeah. time. Because we invest well in the time we do have. Keep up sacrificing. That, you know? that, that is, to me, that's like so opposite of how it should be. But you have, you've affected change in each other by sacrificing something. So you like give up something and, it, and it's like traded way up mm. because it's affected you. She's made this thing. And you may not even realize that was going to happen. I, I, I doubt you even thought that as a motivator. No, but it was I something no you got. Idea. Yeah. yeah. I mean, because if I were you, I'd be like hanging this over him for the rest of my <laughs> Like the next time he doesn't want to take out the trash. Hey, you remember. I, <laughs> I have to run my 5K now, you know? <laughs> Honey, I could use a back rub. I mean, but if you're too busy, I mean, I wasn't too busy to run for you for 45 days. Yeah. <laughs> I've never even thought about that. No. Yeah. Thanks, Aaron. I I'm, the, I'm the evil friend. Yeah. Maybe you shouldn't. No. 30 but, minutes in the pool on that <laughs> But you, you have, <laughs> oops, <Yeah. laughs> you, you, you did it, you were motivated. That's why I asked you in the, the front end, because you were motivated, it really was a motivation of love and compassion. Yeah, it was. It was more that I didn't want to see him suffer. I didn't mm-hmm. want to see him in pain. And I knew I could run. I knew it would tax me a lot more to attempt to pick up his 10,000 pounds a day. We might have to do like one pound every minute for the next like 10 hours or something ridiculous. Um, but running, I was like, no, I can do that. Yeah. Like it's finally something that I got to be able to do with him because on the physical aspect of things, he doesn't work out with me. He's never once allowed me to work out with him. Um, that sounds so bad. It is bad. <laughs> but it's just because we, we get mad at each other. It just doesn't work well. Right. It just, it doesn't, it doesn't go well. You're so, not always going to be in the same pace in the same space and that's okay. Exactly. Right? That's why I was yeah. saying like the baton thing is such a beautiful imagery because yeah. he got to hand it off and he didn't know he was handing it off. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, a lot of what I stem from and what I've really put thought into, like what is the parting thing that I want to leave with my boys if I were to die tomorrow or mm-hmm. with Jonathan? is that our family does hospitality well, Mm -hmm. that we serve others with the finest China, with the best that we have, that you always feel welcome here at any hour of the day. And if you just need to call up and talk to somebody, you'll hear chaos in the background, but we're here for you. Mm -hmm. And that's what I wanted to bring that much more into our relationship. 
not just that we pour out into other people and into our own children, but it's kind of fun because it's something that other people get to actually witness that him and I are pouring into each other just as much as we are pouring out into other people. Mm -hmm. That's so good. And there's not, there's not some big gap people have to connect like, Boy, they're hypocrites, like, <laughs> hate each other, love everybody else. That doesn't seem very genuine. Right. It starts here. Well, oh. training each other. One, one thing that I think is also true of our relationship, which is a factor that helps us, right? Because we have a whole mountain to work through, mm -hmm. right? Yeah, don't wanna, by no means perfect. We, we, I want to mm -hmm. paint the picture correctly. We have tons of struggles, and we consistently are working through friction mm -hmm. and i think that is true of every marriage oh yeah um you know at least so so i, I just want to make sure we're painting a genuine picture life marriage is hard our relationship is hard life is hard parenting is bloody hell um and we're making the best of it right and and creating paradise in it but the the factor that i really appreciate in the hospitality bit is and, and how Lindsay and i work as a team is i think we're very complementary to each other through adversity mm -hmm. and it's the through advert like we are naturally complementary to each other and that's one face of the coin but the other face of the coin is we're very comfortable turning the temperature up to a thousand and just crushing through things and disagreeing with each other mm -hmm. and having those statements and the boys witness that and we unfortunately witness that because we're participants in it and but but it's good because it's it, it motivation is what matters, right? You and I talk about how it's equal effort, not output. Mm -hmm. And we come together with that effort. And the intent is we are closer, we are stronger, we're healthier. Knowing that it's, it's okay for us to work through the friction the heat and the, and the stuff. And I mean, this was just the first time that in a physical challenge where we weren't doing some project on the property, we were throwing both of our bodies at a metaphorical challenge to further ourselves and our relationship. Yeah. Yeah. And you let each other into that journey. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I, I just love how that, just how that kind of came together. Uh, at the end of it, is that uh, what response could you have but to just fall more in love with the other person mm -hmm. uh, when that happens? You know, and, and this is just one of many. You know, the next fifty years you'll be together, whatever. Um, actually, I don't know how long John's gonna live. He's he worries me more. <laughs> yeah. But uh, <laughs> what what else can what else are you thinking about? What what I, else? I wonder. Can I ask one question? Please. Please. This is just like to me. There's somebody listening to girl guy doesn't matter, and they're just like they're hitting a wall, and they they feel like maybe they're even failing at what they're doing right now. Like even just being a mom right now is the most difficult thing in the world. Even just dealing with a job that I don't want to deal with anymore. Or there's some like wall they've been hitting on some goal they've been wanting to do, that book they want to read or uh, write, or this is something they want to pick up again. Like what could you say to that person who has, who is just really struggling with trying to manage where they're at now or where they want to be? I've always said, sink or swim, I'll always choose to swim. <laughs> and when you feel like you're starting to sink, the biggest thing that you can do is to attempt to calm yourself. Mm -hmm. Because when you start to panic, you start to drown. <laughs> and when you're starting to go into hardship, when you're starting to go into failure, you feel like there's absolutely zero time left in your day. Yeah. Um, all you have to do is take one right step in yeah. the direction. Yeah. Put your book next to your nightstand, read two pages. Uh -huh. It doesn't have to be the chapter. Just mm -hmm. start, like you were saying, exercising that muscle just a little bit. Mm -hmm. Um, Parenting is a whole separate thing. It's hard and different, mm -hmm. and struggling. But if you want to spend more time with your kids, put your phone on silent mm -hmm. or turn it off. Mm -hmm. On Sundays, for the most part, we haven't done this. Well, I've done it a little bit, but um, about a year ago, every Sunday after church, Jonathan and I would turn our phones off for the rest of the day. Mm -hmm. I'd say, y'all know where I live. 
mm-hmm. if you need me, come over. Mm-hmm. And we wouldn't turn it back on until Monday. Because you can't be intentional if you're distracted. Mm-hmm. You can't run on a treadmill if you take one step off to the right. Because you'll <laughs> fall. You have to be focused. Right. And that's hard. It's hard if you're in a job that you hate. It's hard if you are a parenting and you feel like you're failing. But you can't. You cannot compare yourself to the person next right. to you. Right. Because if I try to compare myself to Jonathan, well, I am a shame of a person because yeah. I'm real little and I can't do half right. of the things that he can do. And mothers never compare themselves to other mothers, right? You shouldn't. <laughs> Everybody always does because Pinterest yeah. and Instagram and Facebook totally. make things look amazing. And it's not yeah. fair. It's yeah. not. Um, I would just, you know, you have to, you have to choose to try not to mentally look at those things. I saw, I saw a movie, that. I saw a movie that ca- encapsulated this for me, where they were looking through a, a, a photo album, and the one person was saying, "Wow, you guys have a like an incredible life." And he's like, "These are the pictures." He's like, "The the, well, the real life has happened between between these pictures." Yeah, that's those are the stories. That's the grit. And everyone is common in that. There right. is difficulty. You don't really don't post the the moments that you're mad at each other. Someone touched the pool hose and it's broken now <laughs> and you're pissed off at your kids. And you're like, why do you do that? Like, mm-hmm. I'm not going to post that. Mm-hmm. Because then people are like, oh, well, this, that, and the other. No, you post that the pool was successfully built. Mm-hmm. There was all sorts. Of, we built it wrong. In case anyone's curious at first, so we had to undo all of it and redo it. But it's just, it's how do you approach those failures? Yeah. How do you approach building the pool wrong? Well, okay, start over. What a wonderful luxury of a problem set, too. I, right. You... I mean, just in general, like, okay, so you you built something wrong. Dinner sucked. You made it incorrectly. <laughs> I have chicken nuggets. Everybody's going to eat. <laughs> There's food. It may not be a five course meal, but there's something on the table. You've given something of yourself in return for someone else to have life. Mm, That's good. When you're facing a failure that's less finite, right? Like dinner was terrible, which is very rare. And also a quick shout out because I have a lot of friends who are going to appreciate this. Uh You cursed. There's children listening to this. (laughs) So, um, I didn't curse. What did I say? P.O.'d. Oh, yeah. oh my God. So dirty. <laughs> but the, the reason that this is funny, it, it, for the more intimate, uh, uh, for for those in the audience who are at this house or have been a lot, you'll know she helps enforce the language standards mm-hmm. in our home. So that's just really fun. Mm-hmm. Thank you for allowing me to do that. Um, <laughs> but, yeah, she's rolling her eyes. Yes. Totally, yes. Um, did you catch that? She did it for a good 15 seconds. She was waiting for me to look. <laughs> she was waiting for me to look. But uh, <laughs> quick diverse, right back to it. When, when you're looking at less of a, when you're looking at a failure that is less finite, right? Like you feel terrible. Dinner was terrible. Okay, that happened maybe once in the last eight years. But um, we're past this finite issue, right? So it's more systemic. Let, let's say parenting. I feel like I'm failing as a mother. Mm. Right. Or I feel like I'm failing as a wife, which I don't know if you've ever felt that way. I don't think you have. Which but is an attack on the identity. It's an attack it's on the core. identity. Yeah. Like yeah. When, when, and, and that's why the challenge was a big deal for me while I was struggling. And what I had to work through is I felt like I was failing in identity, not in action. Mm-hmm. And that's what I had to reconcile. Right. And, and those are those big moments on how you define yourself. Yeah, am I a quitter? Yeah. Like, am I, I not, do I not finish things? Correct. Yeah. So, so my question is when you take this mentality that you're talking about, and you apply it to something bigger, including like, I feel like I'm failing as a mother, right? What What are you doing then? Oh, Do you I ever feel that way? I constantly feel like I don't have value to anything continually. Mm-hmm. Um, and that's because in my head, I've set certain standards that are unreachable. And there are plenty of times in parenting that I feel like I'm not making the right choice, that this is going to be a failure, that this isn't going to work out, that we should have just stayed with the other option. And the way to push through that is to, you have to try. Mm -hmm. And if you're not, if you're so paralyzed to the point where you're not even willing to put in the effort, then you're choosing to sit out. 
Mm-hmm. And currently, I get the best front row seat to watching the four boys grow. And I'm not going to make every right decision, but I'm going to put the evidence and the research into finding out what the best decision is going to be. And I'm going to attempt to make the most of what I have in front of me and give that back to them. Yeah. You've touched on, Lindsay, thanks for that honesty too. Like a lot of women would say that. I don't think I'm doing anything here. I'm stuck or, which is such a a lie. I mean, I'm going to be. It is. No, <laughs> like, absolutely. It's is. not. It's not true. It's really not. It's demonstrably. I can go downstairs and just see the incredible work you're doing. And John has spoken a list of things he admires about you. That's sort of the strength, I think, in a marriage. Sometimes, too, a lot of women are not self-aware of how great they really are. With like how much damage they're doing in a positive way. Like they're really crushing it. And all we can do as husbands is just use our strength of we see this in you please just borrow my sight for a minute you know see you need to see yourself like i see you um so i'm glad you said it because there's a lot of ladies like what there's another lady out there that thinks she's not doing it right (laughs) that's true and and, you know we were talking in the beginning about marriage being like a high form of friendship right yeah if if we apply the same thought process to friendship like more generically like you and i are Right. Mm -hmm. When we take the time to look at relationship Mm -hmm. with the same level of seriousness, Mm -hmm. it's amazing the value that can be added. Mm -hmm. It's like, hey, let's pause and make sure you're okay. Are we okay? Is this Mm -hmm. okay? You're doing amazing things here. Thank you. Yeah. Right. That that investment, that watering of the proverbial lawn from episode one or Mm -hmm. uh, whatever it may be is, is crucial. Right. And giving that encouragement back and having those sandy checks and challenging assumptions is critical. And that's where you can call out the lie of I'm not adding value. False. Right. It's fair to feel that way. Yep. But let's just take a minute to recharge and show and, and discuss and embrace the insurmountable value that you're adding. Yep. And I know the lie is still going to be there, but let's pause in and, and speak some truth into existence over you, over our relationship, over whatever that relationship is. And um, I, I think there's, something really cool there. It's not the social media of a thousand friends on Facebook. It's the, Hey, I have my friends and I invest in these people. It's, it's like, you know, you told me about like what you were saying earlier too, is like not to panic or lose yourself. And you, you know, I got to swim. Mm-hmm. I'm not going to, I'm not going to drown. Right. I just immediately thought of that cold pool just yeah. to bring that back around. Yeah. Cause when you get, if you've ever done like cold water therapy stuff like that was that was my first real experience of doing it by the way. well how was and that? the first thing that happens when you get into that situation is it's ex- it, it's very very uncomfortable and then it when you shocks get, your system it, yeah it, you can feel it and yeah. then and then you start to run out of breath which is a strange thing because it's not like your lungs have shrunk or anything is mm-hmm. but but you convince yourself that like this is a panic scenario and i need and i'm gonna die mm-hmm. And it's not true. You're going to be fine. But the first thing you have to do, as <laughs> you're telling me, Aaron, just breathe, just breathe. We've got we to we we get, get the breathing under control. Yeah. You're not dying. You know, this is like motherhood 101, right? It's like, you're not, yeah. you're not dying. You're going <laughs> to right. be okay. Yeah. And, you're, and you can live. You're going to get through it just fine. And you'll be surprised at how strong you really are. Right. Yeah. Well, and to that, it's incremental, right? Mm-hmm. Like before you and I ever jumped in the pool, we ran through a lot of blizzards, mm-hmm. right? Like, and there's trust in each other too. Like when it's like, Hey, let's go get in the pool. The reason you didn't say, no, I'm good mm-hmm. is because there's some level of trust in, in, in our relationship and the experiences we've had that allow us to do that. It's, it's been grown upon to try this new silly thing, right? Yeah. You have four kids. I'm sure you get it all the time. How do you do it? Four yeah. kids. That's crazy. She started with one. Yeah. But yeah, yeah, you start with one, you get two, you get three, you just get in. Yeah. Well, the twins yeah. gave us four. <laughs> you, so that was so. a two for one right there. You doubled your output. I did. <laughs> I so, gave myself a concussion that you, day on accident. Yeah. You just, uh, we used, T- Tosh gets this all the time. She's just incredible mom. And like you, she's just always having to re- recalculate and get stronger in areas yeah. and it's it's amazing to see um she's so much better at so many things than i am i just kind of watch and just try to encourage her because i don't know how she's doing it but she's but but when she's asked that question of like how do you do four kids is it's just you get muscles for it mm-hmm. i feel like 
how do you pick up 15,000 or how do you pick up like 150 pounds? What do you have to start with? Yeah. You have to start with one pound, maybe, yeah. maybe five pounds. It's all incremental, right? But it's all, you have to build it upon the last, like yesterday. You don't get to just go in the garage and go, I can pick up 150 pounds. Mm-hmm. I mean, like, Jeremiah can't do that. He's seven years old. If I told him to go pick up 150 pounds, he's going to be like, well, I can't do that. Yeah. But if you also don't try, you don't know. That's right. Well, and that's where coming back to a comment you said a few minutes ago, I had to drop down is when you're getting paralyzed by failure, right? Or fear of failure, or you don't, or you're getting overwhelmed, right? And you're starting to panic and you have to take that deep breath and you just take the step forward. The, what sounds like you came to a decision of, do I take the step forward or not? And then there was this realization of, if I don't take the step forward, then I'm going to be sitting on the bench. And that's the only way I can truly fail. And then the thought that came to my mind is sitting on the bench, choosing not to engage, choosing not to take that step, choosing to become uninvolved is the only way that you can truly fail. So choosing not to engage, right? Choosing not to try is the only way that you're going to ensure failure and that you're on the bench, not in it. Lindsay, that was such a great remark you made. Just you don't know until you try. And uh, I don't know if you surprised yourself at doing that. I mean, it's, it sounds like you, you have so much grit anyway. You've you you have been doing this for a while. I, you know this. You have the muscles for it. But I love that you did. You, you one adopted someone else's challenge, and to bring honor to them in love, um, without without any thought of you know this is adding something for me. Um, and then two, you I think you you've instructed your husband on what the friendship means to you inside of the marriage. And that's affected him in a positive way. Uh, you get a lot of those benefits, which is, which is a great little byproduct. But I, I think one of the big takeaways for me today is just that don't be afraid to, to step it up into something. You may surprise yourself. You may, you may change someone else around you by deciding to challenge yourself that way. And, um, also some of those, sometimes it's just looking around what other people might need assistance in, and that you could be the hero for them. Yeah, it's, it, it was definitely investment in the friendship portion of relationship, also in the partnership, mm-hmm. because we have a goal in mind of something we're trying to build yep. and to have that type of proof of concept and action was a true gift. So thank you, Don. And um, thank you for joining us today. Thank you for having me. It's getting romantically warm, so I'm going to leave. <laughs> oh, no. I'm glad you guys all joined us today. Lindsay, thank you so much for who you are. Doing, you're sorry. awesome. <laughs> Anything to part with? 10 out of 10. Recommend. Always help me partner. <laughs> cool. All right. Take care, everyone. That was another episode of the grit theory if you like what you heard please subscribe and let us know if you did not like what you heard keep it to yourself we hope that you got at least a few nuggets that you want to share we look forward to seeing your comments below thank you so much for joining us today take care